Hello everyone and welcome back to Juno New Origins where I'm going to tackle three contracts in a single launch, Luna Flyby, Brigo Orbit and Brigo Landing. But first I would like to talk about some of the things brought up in the comments. First of all, I know that there's quick saving, quick loading and undo. You do not need to constantly tell me. Uh, it is my policy that I will not do quick saving and quick loading. This goes back to Kerbal Space Program, thousands of videos uh, where I made a firm policy not to do that unless it's re-entry testing or I'm avoiding some glitch. And yeah, that's it. And the reason for that, and I will also show you all my attempts. And as far as clear playthroughs, that's been consistent in Kerbal Space Program and it will be true here. And the reason for that is so that there's tension. You know that every launch is meaningful. There are stakes involved. Uh, granted, uh, with our current budget, it's not quite so many stakes uh, because I tend to build cheap rockets, but there's a reason why I'm good at building cheap rockets, and it's because I've had to go through this a lot in Kerbal Space Program, and so I've, I make my rockets very nice and tight so that they do not cost me so much money when I fail. And yeah. So I know that there are a lot of YouTube videos with very amazing things being done in games, but they are the product of trying repeatedly at it, which is fine. I mean, that's another way of doing things, you know, a lot of quick saving, quick loading, and they manage to do it one in a hundred times, and it's amazing. But that's not my thing. Uh, I think I should be able to replicate my results consistently, and so you know that if I tried the drone ship landing thing again, I would at least do as good a job and probably better than I did last time. So I think that's important. But anyway, so with that said, there is another comment. This one actually is from the first episode, but it just got posted. And that comment was lamenting the fact that because I skipped the tutorials, I didn't notice the gyroscopes. And that got me thinking, because back in Kerbal Space Program again, uh, I played with a mod called Realism Overhaul that basically nerfed what was the equivalent of the gyroscopes in Kerbal Space Program, which was the reaction wheels. And the reason why it nerfed the reaction wheels was because they aren't realistic. Um, in real life spacecraft, the only things that have something like the gyroscopes are space stations and the Hubble Space Telescope or space telescopes like that, which are huge and don't have to turn very quickly. Uh, in real life, real spacecraft use just RCS to turn, and that's all they have. Of course, engine gimbling as well during launch, so and sometimes fins. So that was well, interesting because I'm used to that. I'm used to not having the gyroscopes anyway. And I need to sort of nerf myself. <laughs> I need to I need to uh, have a handicap of some kind. And so maybe we'll try this mission without any gyroscopes. Now I don't know if the game is going to like this or not. Uh, this It might be too much to ask for here. We will see. But I think I'm also going to build a new rocket from scratch, if that's possible. Just in case something about the other rocket was messing around. So here's our control core, and we will have no volume for gyros. And we will build it around that. And we will see if I can do this mission like that. Now, I, I do want to use the new pad, I think. Maybe I need to, maybe I don't. Now, we've started with this, so I, uh, let me see if... So, Pekka suggested that uh, the problem I had was just a fuel line problem. Uh, with the nose cone fuel not feeding through, uh, it was because I had a different uh, fuel in the nose cone than on the engine, but I didn't think that that was the case. So, uh, but I'll, I'll try it. So here we are going to set this um, fuel type, well, let's see. Fuel. It's not even reading this, but let's uh, make sure that we have fuel line on that, fuel line on that, and fuel line on that. And this is going to be a... Well, the best we can do is care locks, so we'll go care locks. And we are going to make it smaller. And if we have here a care locks tank, we don't get Delta V. That's what I thought. And, oh, we, we have to put fuel. Sorry. I have put fuel now. <laughs> I have put fuel in, and uh, it still doesn't read any delta V. It's in vacuum. This has thrust, but no delta V. All right, so the previous thing I had done to sort of trick the situation was to uh, directly 
attach this to that. And what I did was... Now, I don't know if this is allowed or not. So I'm going to set that as primary so that I can take this off. And I'll put this on directly. And now it reads the Delta V. And I'll put this back on. And then I'm going to set that to primary. And then take this off. And then we have it on. <laughs> so, and I made the comment that, you know, most control cores are toroidal anyway. They're like the Saturn instrument unit. But, yeah, maybe that's going too far. And this is an uh, exploit that they did not consider. Or maybe it's supposed to be allowed. I don't know. We'll try it out, though. So, we, we ultimately need to land on Brigo. And so the starting thrust weight ratio is 1.61, but we don't we don't exactly have landing legs right now. I think that's all right. Three kilometers per second is a lot. Um, just in case, because we're going out to one moon and then transferring to another moon, and there's no telling how long it's gonna take. I'm sort of tempted to. I thought we had solar panels. We need solar panels. Solar panels. Right. I think we should have some solar panels. So that we can recharge. It's probably gonna take a while. And since I don't have the gyros, I'm gonna need RCS as well. Four will be fine. And then we need RCS. Now, the RCS previously was very expensive. Fifty K a piece. And heavy, too. I don't know how much thrust we have. Two kilonewtons. Well, we can do with... Five hundred newtons is actually more than I need. Uh, but I need multiple directions. Well... Apparently, we have not discovered the RCS quad. A oh, fuel cell is interesting. Maybe we should have a mon propellant engine if we're gonna have these. They can't run off of the Carolox here. I guess I'll take that. Okay, so we have some RCS ports. I don't know exactly if they're good enough. And again, uh, no gyros snuck in, right? No gyros snuck in. I don't know if the autopilot, I mean, I don't know if the stable, I don't need all of the autopilot functions, I just need the stabilization system to be okay. Uh, but we can do without if necessary. But um, now we need some mod propellant. It's still really expensive, even though I sized them down a lot, they're 31k. So this will be a significant uh, cost to me. This is a handicap because... They were expensive. They're really expensive, these RCS sports. Even though I uh, toned them down a lot, uh, it doesn't seem like changing the power makes any difference to the cost. Um, 400 newtons is probably more than enough. We don't want to use the fuel too quickly. Um, this is only a one ton thing. You know what? 200 newtons will be fine. 400, uh, the Apollo Lunar Lander had 400 newton thrusters. It could bite me if uh, having these all so low. It might be better to have these closer to the center of mass. Since they're effectively roll thrusters. So, did we unlock hemispheres or not? So for the record, these are supposed to be spherical tanks. But... I don't have the hemispheres, I don't think, yet. And, you know, I'm not gonna unlock them right now. So this is a 2.12 km per second lander. That'll be enough to get from the moon over to uh, Rigo and land, I think. And it's got a good enough starting thrust weight ratio and ending thrust weight ratio to land. 
We definitely don't need a 20 degree gimbal range. That might be dangerous. <laughs> I'll go with six would be good enough there. I'll give it a little bit more thrust weight ratio. I mean, the burn time is 8.7 minutes. That's a little bit long. Seven minutes. That's, that's a while. It's a while to deliver that, but on the landing part, it's probably not gonna be too bad. All right. And then we'll have a transfer stage. Gas generator. Could have just used the gas generator engine on the probe as well. I mean, that might be physically too big though. We're at 5.83 meters. I, I'm sort of half wanting to stay on the small pad. But that might be asking for too much. Yeah, I, I want a bigger rocket. I want a nice big rocket. Is having four engines a good idea? I don't know. I don't have any special feelings about it, but it's about time we had something fancier than one engine per stage. So a four million dollar rocket, 37 tons, 16.6 .6 meters. So we're gonna have a little bit more fun with this and also stakes. Uh, because we don't know if the RCS is going to do a good job or whether I can handle it with just gimbling and no, no reaction wheel slash gyroscopes. But we're going to find out, but we're going to have to launch from the more expensive launch site too. I don't know, it's one thing I very much don't know is whether we have enough mod propellant for this. And we probably also need some mod propellant on this stage. And certainly some RCS thrusters. Oops. Oh, that's interesting. With the RCS thrusters here, I can't make it longer, huh? Okay. Well, we'll just leave it be then. Do I need separate mod propellant tanks on that one, though? I guess we'll just copy these. I feel like I want a bigger rocket still. We've got four engines. Activate on start. I guess. I don't see any reason why we shouldn't activate the solar panels. Is there? They're just flat solar panels. They don't extend, right? Hmm. Okay, well, that's something else we're gonna find out. Okay. Nearly five million bucks. Let's see what goes wrong. All right, and we have to pay 641,000 to launch it. Now we're talking. Okay, so I will try to activate the stabilization system. But without any gyros, we do have the gimbling, but without any gyros, we'll see. Uh, we are not going to do fireworks. <laughs> oh, uh, today it's not reading my throttle. That's a little bit sad. All right, our brand new shiny, well, not really that shiny, really powerful rocket. Let's go. Well, I can turn it. Oh, uh, maybe I don't want the RCS firing right now. Let's turn off RCS. Okay, so far so good. Actually, it sort of feels better now. <laughs> I'm just so used to this way anyway. It's a lot less wiggly. Okay, we need to throttle down a bit. That was going too steep there. Oh, soul panel taking heat damage. Uh-oh. Please, soul panel, don't make me get boom power. <laughs> Oh, they boomed. Okay, we might need to put those in fairings or actually just not accelerate so much in the atmosphere. Oh, we used a fair bit of the mod propellant already, actually. 
It says 90% there. Alright, sort of a lopsided orbit. Uh, yeah, uh, it's because I started out so steeply. I did not mean to do that. But, um, let's see. Luna. Luna is our target, yes. Okay. So... Let me focus back on spacecraft. Oh, okay. Okay, so that's working. That's good. All right. And we are going to try and figure out where to hit Luna. Oh, well, we're launching for the more equatorial site. Yeah, it's not too much of a problem, is it? Now, remember, we're not trying to get into orbit around Luna, but we really don't want it to incline us like this. We do want it to boost us up to Brigo orbit, ideally. And so I'm going to make another mid-course adjustment so that we can change the inclination. If we lined up perfectly with Luna orbit, then we wouldn't need to do this, but I'm not doing that. So that's really actually too close. It's boosting our orbit too much. And importantly, the flyby contract does not say how close we need to fly by, right? Yeah, just be in Luna SOI, so... That's no big deal. What I want is to be flat to Brigo's orbit as much as possible. And ideally not too high. But we could probably fix everything else like that. So that'll get us to a thousand kilometers away from Luna. But again, if we get too close, we're going to end up having problems getting to Brigo. So I'll leave it like that. And again, I'll execute it myself just for kicks, <laughs> just for excitement. Okay, well, now we will have to activate RCS just a little bit. Oh, it auto stabilize. I, um, yeah, we should turn that off. At least while the engine is on, we don't have to use the RCS. Okay, that's probably good enough. We can adjust everything else on the mid-course correction. Currently have 410 meters per second left on this stage. Okay, and 58 meters per second on the mid-course correction. Alright, power. Well, we still got 100% battery. Yes, it doesn't matter that we lost the solar panel. Just a two second burn in theory. All right, uh, let's have stabilization off. Okay, ignition. It shouldn't be sensitive to the timing very much. Oh, did we do too much? I think we did too much. Okay, that's better, that's better. All right, we'll leave it like that. And now uh, another little tradition. Leaving the spacecraft tumbling because I don't want to use RCS to stabilize it. On to Luna. <laughs> let's see. Uh, it stabilizes during time warp anyway. Okay, we got the Luna contract. We are flying by Luna, but it changed the camera, so uh, we had a nice view of Luna, and then it changed the camera, so we can't see it anymore. Double check that our periapsis isn't crashing into it. No. Okay, passing by Luna. Someday they'll tell us to land on you. Someday. Okay. Right. So, step one to get to Brigo. We are now going to target Brigo instead. And that works. Good. Now, I'm going to add Apoapsis here, lift the orbit up so that we get to Brigo's orbit. That's a Luna enc encounter there. Okay, but also we want to make sure that when we cross Regal's orbit, we are in line with it. It looks pretty good. Looks very good already because of the way we did the Luna flyby. But it's, the timing is wrong. But that's fine. Uh, once we get to periapsis, we'll drop the orbit down so that we get an encounter. And then we'll go around one more time to encounter Brigo. So, so we're doing good. 
And yeah, this is why I needed solar panels because we're going to have a lot of time where we're coasting. It's using the upper. If I could just activate the lower RCS instead of the upper RCS, I don't didn't want to use the RCS on the lander, or the RCS tanks on the lander. Oh well, sixty nine percent. I'm gonna presume that it's also sixty nine percent on the lander, which is not great. Okay, stabilization, and it should be time close enough to ignition time. Okay, turn off RCS ignition. Okay, that's good enough for now. All right. So here then, we're gonna pull our orbit down and get the Brigo encounter. That's already not a Brigo encounter. <laughs> oh, there, there, there. Okay. Okay, and we should be able to see our Brigo periapsis 38.2 kilometers. That's just fine. All right. So that is what we'll do. 65.4 and this stage still has 241. My battery's at 80% now. I should check the orientation next time. Okay. And... Uh, it shouldn't be 4 point... Oh, well, that's just because it's the next time was just fooled by the fact that we went past the node while I was turning. Okay, we don't want to crash into it. Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. that's a little bit too close. Oh, wow. We wait, it says 2.41 now as well. Okay. Too sensitive. We needed weaker RCS ports. Uh, it's so sensitive, I think I'll take that. Okay. Yeah, let's just take that and we'll have that encounter. Now, let's see about the sunlight. Okay, approaching Brigo. Oh, we are in Brigo SOI. I really didn't want RCS to be firing right there. Thank you. Just because we enter an SOI doesn't mean all the RCS has to fire all over the place. Okay, what is our periapsis right now since the RCS all fired? Uh, 86. We use the assist from Luna, so we don't have to use as much to capture. Uh, well, we only have two meters per second left in this stage. Okay, but we'll go to periapsis to round it out. There's this other flag over here. I had landed over there already in the crater. We seem to be in line with this little flag here, so we might as well try for it. We've got lots of Delta V in the lander. Okay, and finishing this stage. Staging. Can't hardly see anything, but... Yep, we have orbited Brigo. Um, we need to go first south to hit that flag. Let me see, can I target that flag? Me missing? No, I want this flag. This flag. Okay. Uh, maybe that is Mimas Ring. That's Mimas Crater. This is Mimas Ring. Shouldn't this place call, be called Mimas? No, not Plan Burn. They call it Brigo, but I swear it's supposed to be called Mimas. Okay, so we want to go a little bit south. Let me take it off of lock. And south. How much RCS do we have on this? I can't see a darn thing. Oh, this is still on 100%. Well, we're in good shape then. I should keep that up though, because... Yeah. 
could get dicey. Not that far south. I mean, not that far north. That's that's ready enough. I need to either assign or figure out what the lock current hitting short key shortcut key is. Um, let me see target. Oh, there we go. That's better. Yeah, I mean, if we go for this middle of the box, we need to go further north. Okay, now well, it looks like it's close to the center line of the box. We'll have to refine it a bit. Okay, let's time up a little bit. Now this is a very long stage, but we don't need all of the Delta V in order to land. Yeah, I mean, for some reason the second stage was using a lot more of the mob propellant than this stage does, so I need to lock that. Um, you pin, please. I could just not use lock current hitting, or I could do it. It probably won't matter too much. It's not wasting too much fuel, I think. But we can just leave that off too. No, oh, it's in the valley. Interesting. Okay. Oh, well, let's get out of time warp. Uh, we probably want to go a little bit more north. Looking good so far. Well, here I've got way more mop propellant than I need. I overdid things on this mission. I don't like that. I shouldn't have. But I wanted to build a big rocket. So I overdid things. No, well, we're just headed on down. I'm pretty sure we'll hit the area. I have to say, it feels better without the gyros. I thought that getting rid of the gyros would be more of a handicap, but actually it it's sort of, I guess it's more in line with the way I normally do things anyway, so it doesn't hurt too much. I've learned my lesson. We're, we're going to take these, uh, these landings slow, in slow motion. There's too much hoppiness otherwise. Maybe I shouldn't overthink it. I think we should just land in this. I don't think it's like a rock formation or something. Yeah, I think it's just the canyon. It's the big ring around the crater. Wait, would fireworks work here? It says go higher than 14 kilometers and it's counting the thing. I, I should check once. I think we're going to probably go up again. But I don't know if I have enough uh, explosive force. Hmm. I'm keeping it to a quarter X. I mean, yeah. And for this, I'll keep the lock current hitting just so that we are safe as possible. No need to take any chances at this juncture. Explosive power is 5,600 right now. <laughs> just want to point that out. Okay, game. I'm coming down as softly as I can. Don't tip me over. Please. Okay. Oh, uh, no, don't tip over. Don't tip over. Uh, RCS off. Uh, uh, my, my engine's off. My engine's off. I mean, you hear the click when my engine hits the bottom, actually. Um, all right. Is it, uh, let me go to full time. Land on Brigo. Why does it say not say land on Brigo? Hold for okay. Hold for thirty seconds. I want to see about our explosive force. Okay, we got the Brigo landing. I don't want to end flight. We have one kilometer per second. We can get back to orbit with this, but I'm interested to see whether we can do fireworks. So up we go. RCS on. Uh, RCS doesn't need to be on at this point. We have the engine on. But if we want to stop that roll, RCS might as well be on. Does it count as fireworks if there's nobody here to watch them? Inquiring minds want to know. Well, 
We're running out of explosive force here, though. I should have gone straight up. Well, I mean, we can cut the engines for now. And just coast up. 3742. Well, we've got the mod propellant tanks, too. Will it count? I mean, will everything explode here? Or will it just be the Carolox tank, in which case we don't have enough? Hmm. Well, let's find out. Uh, for science. We could have gotten to orbit again, by the way. We. It's sort of embarrassing that I packed so much. I also packed so much extra mob propellant, but now I know. Ah, it wasn't enough. Oh well. But I think it would have taken it if we had had enough. Okay, well, and flight. And safe flight. Okay, but our goal to do those three contracts was successful, and now we have a Niobe flyby. I don't even know where Niobe is. So that's, oh, that's probably the outermost one, isn't it? We haven't visited yet. So, but we don't, we just got another Regal, Regal Orbit and Regal Landing. And nothing in particular here either. All right. So that was a reaction wheel slash gyroless mission. And we'll probably proceed like that because honestly, it actually felt fairly solid. Um, I got my craft is called new. Of course, we did have the benefit of a rocket that was like four times the mass of our previous rocket. So there is that and four times the cost. So yeah, but if I downscale it a little bit, it should still have done everything. And uh, we didn't need that much RCS propellant at the top as it turns out. So I'll refine this a little bit to make it a little bit tighter and we will see what we can do. I want to land on Niobe. But they're not going to give me a contract, are they? Anyway, we will see about that next time. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.